We've been covering these House oversight hearings. I just kind of want to take a little break from the Trump news because it is very pressing, but take a break from that for now in this segment and talk about a recent hearing as we've been discussing with the House Oversight Committee led by James Comer, all of these political stunt styled hearings, just an attempt to usually attack Biden or the left and not actually discuss solutions. They said when they were campaigning so many times uh, in 20. 22 uh, in that midterm election, we're going to address inflation and gas prices and stuff like that. And then now we're getting hearing after hearing that is accomplishing nothing. And I have another example of that for you here. And this one, let me get the title for you. This one was titled Death by a Thousand Regulations, the Biden Administration's Campaign to Bury America in Red Tape. Um, and as has been the case with a lot of these hearings, they just keep backfiring on the organizers, on James Comer, on the Republicans. This is supposed to be their moment to shine. They got the majority in the House, very thin majority, but they got it. They can have the House Oversight Committee and organize these hearings. And then they just implode often. And because of uh, the presence of Democrats in the room who have taken this as an opportunity to point out the absurdity of these hearings and... Um, it's been great. So with that being said, I have a few moments from this most recent one, starting with AOC here. We're here discussing rolling back a regulatory state, not even pointing out a specific area, not even a specific area. I mean, what are we here for? I yield back. And James Comer is about to jump in and try to dunk on AOC. Um, it doesn't go well. Take a look. Gentle lady yields back, but it, uh, the purpose of the committee hearing is to talk about many different regulations. And I'm amused that the, the gentle lady is concerned about raising the age, the regulation that limits the age for pilots when there's a shortage of pilots, but they're okay with a, with a president of the United States who's more than 20 years older than the minimum age. Uh, Mr. Chairman, since you're referring to me, it's not age, it's training our time. The number of hours that an individual is training, not the age. <laughs> so God forbid we don't lower the amount of training hours it takes to be a pilot flying a, a pod full of people through the sky. Um, but I don't even understand the point he was trying to make. Let's say AOC also is against lowering the age that you have to be to be a pilot which she's not, she's saying it's training hours, but let's just say, still, what was the point he was trying to make? That connects to Biden's age, how? You wanna make sure that you have to be a certain age to be a pilot, but you're okay with Biden who's old. <laughs> what? Didn't see how those two things connected. Maybe I missed something, but it kind of gets to the core of the absurdity of this because just this whole idea of regulations bad, let's roll back as many regulations as possible. That's not a productive conversation, but often that's the one that's gone to by many uh, within the GOP and people like the sound of that. And I've talked about before uh, the idea that the GOP is really good at one thing, and that's branding, branding their messages in a way that clearly people buy into because they're able to win elections, probably not as much as they want to, but enough elections often. And it, it uh, is because of the effective bumper sticker politics that is done, right, where the messages that they put out are sort of taking what are somewhat complex, nuanced discussions, solidifying them down into something that fits on a bumper sticker, but actually serves the opposite um, agenda than the one that the voters should be supporting which would actually benefit their lives and be the best for the country but because it's effective on a bumper sticker it's a good quick message a lot of people think it's the right message for them when it's absolutely not and so a lot of people i've talked to plenty in my personal life clearly they buy into this with their support of the gop just think the term regulation is bad oh regulation let's get rid of woohoo trump says i'm gonna get his, get rid of as many regulations as possible if i was president yeah absolutely but what does that mean because it absolutely depends on the specific regulation let's talk about an individual one are there bad ones sure we could find some bad ones but often in the name of let's get rid of as many regulations as possible, they eliminate and roll back important ones that are protecting people. Often that's the purpose of a regulation is to protect people when the free market hasn't been doing it effectively. Um, 
And so a good example of this is Dodd-Frank and Trump's rolling back of regulations in regard to the banking industry that then you could point to and say, possibly that's why we saw these bank collapses, um, or at least individual ones, or the railroad industry and the rolling back of uh, regulations in regard to the railroad industry. And maybe that's why um, certain train derailments are happening. And so these regulations often have a purpose, but in the name of all regulations are bad and are a burden, we roll back important ones, um, or at least the GOP does, and people support that when it actually hurts them. And these oversimplified messages are often so counterproductive and so um, void of nuance for the purpose of serving a really bad agenda. Then you have Jared Moskowitz here taunting the GOP over this hearing. It's titled, The Biden Administration Campaign to Bury America in Red Tape. This, this. For podcast listeners, he's holding up a roll of red duct tape. This is their hearing. Literally, just red tape with Joe Biden's name written on it. Just make it real simple for people. That's the point of this hearing. It's not about solving problems. It's about red painter's tape with Joe Biden's name written on it. And look what Joe Biden has done. Look, it's right there. Here's the proof. It's titled, The Biden... Mm. <laughs> Hilarious. Um, I'll show you one more moment from Jared Moskowitz uh, here. I know it's inconvenient timing, but perhaps we actually need more regulation with presidents taking nuclear codes and cuddling with them and showering with them in their homes. You know, I want to answer uh, the representative's question on ATF and pistol braces. Has that ever happened before? Well, in fact, yes. It happened under the Trump administration. With Trump's ATF, they banned bump stocks. Bump stocks were legal, and then they weren't. The Trump administration's ATF did that. By the way, good decision. People shouldn't be able to turn guns into automatic weapons. So hilarious joke at the beginning there uh, in regard to Trump, and then getting to one of the regulations that they're complaining about is an example they'll say of Biden's regulation state is an ATF um, regulation that recently, somewhat recently was put into place to more heavily regulate what are called pistol braces. Uh, and by the way, in case you're wondering, the ATF, of course, is the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms and Explosives. And uh, they're trying to more heavily regulate pistol braces, which make certain pistols more like a rifle, more dangerous in that way. And so they're trying to make those more Rest, uh, restricted, more regulated, but not preventing or banning them, um, just more heavily regulating them. And that is too far for the GOP. And so they're unhappy with it. Very much so. And Jasmine Crockett discusses the same subject here. Uh, there was conversation about ATF because my colleagues love to talk about their guns, baby. Uh, and I'm from Texas. So let me be clear. I also own firearms. Let me scream. Democrats own guns, too. Let me make it clear. I, I own guns and I'm licensed to carry. That is a regulation. Regulations aren't necessarily bad. It didn't stop me from being able to get a gun. Um, so we were talking about or y'all were talking about the ATF, which I wasn't going there. I didn't plan to go there. Uh, but you know what? I, I honestly wish the ATF would run amok because we know that seemingly the people that run this chamber don't have the courage to come up with one of the things we've heard is common sense regulations when it comes to guns. And to be clear, our constitution, the second amendment anticipates people having common sense. Unfortunately, we have not done that. And unfortunately, it has cost us lives. So when you were testifying a little bit earlier, you talked about unintended consequences and the fact that we are supposed to be able to anticipate that as lawmakers when we are writing laws. Unfortunately, not only have we ignored the unintended consequences, but we've got foreseeable consequences that are continually ignored. And that is why we are talking about regulation, at least on this side of the aisle. And our definition of common sense is one that doesn't keep us in the pockets of corporations, but keeps us in the pockets of the people. Absolutely. Um, and one of the points she's making there is Maybe the reason, Republicans, you feel like the ATF is overextending 
is uh, overstepping with these recent regulations is because Congress is not doing its job because based on the obstruction of the GOP, Congress is not implementing the common sense policies that would more heavily regulate um, firearms to protect human lives, not taking away your second amendment, just more properly regulating very dangerous um, killing tools. And so the ATF, because of Congress's inaction, maybe feels a little more obligated to do what the ATF can do within its capacity, within its authority to regulate these dangerous uh, weapons and protect lives. And it is kind of back to our conversation about bumper sticker politics. It is so unfortunate that a lot of firearm owners, such as Jasmine Crockett, are actually, um, and the unfortunate part is that they still don't support the correct politicians. The fortunate part is that they're actually for many of them, very common sense policies in a vacuum. When you discuss with firearm owners, um, policies such as universal background checks, uh, red flag laws, raising the age to purchase firearms, and many others, even I've posed to many gun owners myself, the idea of a driver's license like structure for firearms and they're on board in a vacuum but then many of them aren't like jasmine crockett and don't follow that through to supporting the correct uh politicians who would implement those common sense policies because while over here they can have a conversation and go you know what that would make sense like a driver's license for a gun you can still get a gun but you just go through training and you have to go check in every so often and maybe have some sort of examination um once it gets to the politics of it, oh no, the Democrats, the Democrats, I've, the bumper sticker of it is that the Democrats are taking away your second amendment and Republicans are protecting your freedom. But that's not the reality um, at all. And the prevailing view within the, the Democratic Party is actually to allow you to have your second amendment, but just regulate these dangerous killing tools more often um, and possibly ban certain ones such as uh, AR-15s and AR-15 type weapons like um, assault weapons generally and we can do very reasonable things and you can still be a gun owner you could still like going to the gun range or whatever um, and that's what's unfortunate is so many people get tricked by the branding of the republicans oh but they're, they're holding guns in their ads and they're telling me the democrats are taking away my rights and they end up supporting the gop when in reality in a nuanced discussion many of which I've had with as someone as Jasmine Crockett does who lives in Texas um, and, and has my whole life. So many conversations with people that when you strip the partisanship out of it, actually like the idea of common sense policies. They do. But then you add the layer of partisan, partisanship, you add the dishonest narratives from the GOP, and all of a sudden they're voting for Republican politicians. It is really unfortunate. Thank you so much for watching. If you want to be a part of what makes this show possible, plus get access to the full video version of the show hours before all the clips are able to be uploaded to the YouTube channel, plus get the bonus show on the weekends, you can do so by going to lukebeasleyshow.com slash membership. That's lukebeasleyshow.com slash membership, and there's a link in the description.